Seems I'm not as smart as I first thought. What do they say about people who make errors? That they must pay the price. Where does that come from? I'm not sure if it's biblical. Probably not. Uh, biblical sentiment, anyway. Judge not, let us ye be judged. And if ye don't get down and do the work, ye shall pay us the price, Jeremy. You may even be plunged out the Garden of Eden you find yourself in. Alan Tishmarsh have the same thing. Back home, my folks are outraged at my choice of lifestyle. They said they knew it was too much for me. Well, if they knew that, why are they outraged? But you can't use logic on them. Still, they're the ones with the money, so I have to keep them on side. But that's, that's the difficult thing. I thought it would be easy to get a third in my BA and uh, go on to an MA here, but my results came out last week and I got an ordinary pass. And I'm not ordinary. I'm exceptional. I just haven't been doing the work, you know. So an outsider would just look at my work and say, that bloke is ordinary. I can't trust him. Don't talk to that bloke sat in the corner. He's a nutter. What fools. What fools. They should look into things more. It's a shame I, uh, I couldn't have submitted my radio broadcast as coursework. Of course, it uh, might have reflected badly on my listeners if they knew I was submitting the shows as coursework. But if they're up that time of night, it's their own damn fault. That would show them I'm not ordinary. But of course, it doesn't work like that. Anyone who could do a three-hour discussion on whether Chilean miners should lose weight and go on a special diet just in case they get stuck again might be judged as extraordinary, even if I do say so myself. So what if we miss two news bulletins? I'm the star of this. Who could ever replace me? Paxman? Well, of course not. That would be an enormous step down for him. But, uh... I'm not surprised they don't recognise my talents. I'm arguably the best judge of my own talents. Sometimes round here I think I'm the only judge of my talents. Maybe it would be better if I left. <laughs> Garden. Of course. That programme at the Chile Miners did get a lot of complaints. But points of view probably only too happy to fill them. They love a bit of blacking up the BBC. But there are a few good things about complaints, I think. Every time I get one, I can say it was down to excellent listening figures, and debates become heated. I wish I got more, to be honest, uh, but there's only a handful of able-bodied students at, at that time. Maybe I could have turned some of the positive comments into complaints, like water into wine, I don't know. Oh, well, there's always something you could do differently, like turning an entire religion onto wine. Okay, some critique is justified. The time I keep getting the time wrong. But today does that, okay? Especially at John Humphreys. So what if I can't tell the difference between 20 past 10 and 22 10? It's not like it, the listener's life's depended on it. Unless they were using that to check a pulse. And sometimes clocks, they, they, they just stop. That, like now, it, it, it's done it again. It's meant to be... I, I, I don't know, I don't know. Who cares what the time is? I certainly don't. I do know stuff, of course. I can tell you that Afghanistan's a dangerous place, that Malta is generally safe, and no one ever knows where the Ivory Coast is on a map. I don't know if any of that would be any help if you were a reporter, for instance. Although, I mean... I doubt that Anne Robson knows the answers to any of her own questions. But that lack of knowledge doesn't seem to pass muster with the fools that run the exam board. We have to know these places that are right out. So what if I don't know where some stupid country is? Does that make me a bad person? I think I know where I went wrong. I've been spending too long in here, if I'm honest. I should have been concentrating on my work. That's what I should have been doing. Not this stupid station. No matter how velvety and smooth my tones. <sighs> Stop it, Jeremy. You're above this. this. 
They're all too thick to listen without your guidance anyway. No point in fighting it, I suppose. The idiots are taking over. If they can't even be trusted with buying clothes, that sort of defeats the object in the first place. How could they be trusted with sorting out bloody quality programs? Common sense tells you this. Still, nothing I can do now. That's the way it goes. Best lay plans and all that jazz. It seems that I will have to go through the channels and get my knobs twisted. Is that the expression? Is that... No, I, I must find a different university. One where they bloody well get me. Maybe go to Chichester or Warwick. Something like that. <sighs> Heavy. There we are. Oh, that bloody clock's gone again. <sighs> Better start going through these lot. Picked up a whole load from the UCAS clearinghouse. Of course, uh, what I'm looking for as a journalist is a good mix of students. So I'll make sure I go through all the pictures and check there aren't any unsightlies. In fact, I went through one of these uni leaflets earlier and there were no black faces in it at all. How can they be so racist in this day and age? Look, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that they should black up people's faces or anything like that, you know. For one thing, it wouldn't look particularly convincing. And it would be grossly offensive. And okay, they were based in Wales, but that's beside the point. I had a good mind to write to them and, uh, and tell them, or, or at least email, you know. If they can't find people in the campus, at least drag some ethnics in from the street. When I say street, I, I, I don't mean the hood, you know. Um, and if they could add some gay people and transsexuals as well while they're about it, you know, so much the better. I thought I met a gay black man once, but it was crosswise. It turned out to be Chris Eubank, although he does come from Brighton. Obviously, I, um, I don't want to go to anywhere common. But I can't go to Durham or Edinburgh or anywhere like that. I'm stuck, really, taking what I can afford. And I can't afford heroin or smack at this precise juncture. Well, of course, I uh, broadcast this news on Monday and Giles just lapped it up. He told me, you'll never get anywhere in this business if you keep broadcasting good news like that. He could have just pretended, pretended to feel sorry for me. Look, how hard would that have been? Oh, I'm sorry, Jeremy. No, I feel for you, Jeremy. Maybe it's a bit out of character. A bit out of character. Perhaps that should be a lot out of character. If I'm going to make up dramatic changes of the heart for Giles, I should at least make them in character. The only thing that makes him feel anything is lined up behind a bar. Well, he's got a stronger constitution than me. Is that the word? Honestly, I'm a journalist, I should know. Better look it up, get the old Blackberry out. Ah, here we go, here we go. Constitution, fundamental law. No, no that, that, that doesn't sound quite right. Um, I don't think fundamental law can take any more. Oh no, uh, constitution, here we are, here we are. The last way something or someone is composed. Yes, that, that, that sounds about right. Um, yeah, a message. I'll deal with that later. Yeah, so, um... Another year at university and I'm going to have to sell this. I need all my money for my sins. Anyway, depressed as I was, I decided not to show it to Geraldine. She, of course, was uh, upset for me, but accepted my invitation to, to the pass out prom. In fact, I, I got so drunk that I very nearly did pass out. I did think that Geraldine and I might stay together after the grand, but it doesn't seem like that now. But I'm getting ahead of myself, I think. Out of some dancing and a, and a few drinks, I did feel a bit queasy. One too many tequila slammers. I probably had what Robson Crusoe and uh, Castaway had, where they couldn't stop, you know. Or maybe I had just too much to drink. Probably the reason. I've still got a bit of a migraine from it now. Still, you only graduate once. Well, graduate from a BA. Hopefully I could pull off graduating once more without too many people noticing. Where was I? Uh, yes, drinking. Drinking down slammers. 
I think they were spiked, but I couldn't really be sure. I mean, I mean, how could you tell the difference with tequila? Geraldine didn't have that many, now I come to think of it. So maybe that means something. Anyway, uh, I was throwing up in the gents when my friend Andy calls me through the cubicle door and says that something's happening on the dance floor with Geraldine. I said, what? As the tequila got to her as well. Well, obviously I was in no position to have a look, but it turns out that Charles was in the middle of the floor, slow dancing and kissing Geraldine. What a bastard. I confronted Geraldine. I, um, obviously I cleaned myself up first. I'm not stupid. Confronting someone smelling a sick, that's not really going to make an impression. Okay, I went back to my flat, had a wash, got changed, tried to sober up, and then confronted her as quickly as possible. Of course, it didn't really have the necessary kick to it, but that's all roundabouts and smoke. I mean, swings and smoke. No, I didn't, I, I, I didn't mean that. Thinking about it, I may have had some absinthe as well. So, she told me Giles was consoling her because she only got a 2-1. A 2-1. I'd dream of getting a 2-1. She said she knew that and that I already mentioned to it earlier on. That wasn't the point though, um, she didn't understand. Anyhow, I'm her console around here. I don't care if she can't get into the Guardian now. That's not even on my mind when I'm with her. Besides, she uh, likes the review section, and that's good enough for me. She can be a bit funny at times about my ambitions. Okay, she wants some of her own, but still, doesn't Giles? I sometimes think that Giles could be more ambitious than me, but he's too distracted. She could do much better uh, than, than Giles, I mean. Like, uh, I don't know, me for instance. I doubt whether Giles could console if his life depended on him. He should console himself about what a bad consoler he is, which would be punishment enough, being that he's so bad at it. Come to think of it, I uh, haven't heard head nor tail of either of them since. He's probably with her. Well, who am I with? <laughs> you! <laughs> and you're not even real! <laughs> I don't even know why I'm shouting. <sighs> I don't want to keep doing these videos. It's only going to depress me watching this back. Let's hope I, you know, come across well. Which I, I should probably do. I think the hair will, but... I don't know.